welcome everybody to this afternoon session. I hope you're not feeling sleepy. So we're talking about dodging the bullet and pseudo exfoliation. No sound? So do we have the anticipation, the readiness, the preparedness and the reflexes and agility and the skill to dodge a bullet? No, we don't. So it's basically a phrase to narrowly avoid something or some situation that turns out to be undesirable, disastrous, dangerous or otherwise harmful. In other words, to avoid a dangerous or a negative situation. So uh, pseudo exfoliation is very uh, uh, typical that it presents with challenges that require careful pre-operative planning and intraoperative care like all other surgeries. This needs a little extra to ensure that there is a successful and safe surgery. And it does involve anticipation, a good pre-operative assessment, and before surgery we assess other confounding problems. So if a patient has glaucoma, first get the glaucoma under control, then see how well the pupil dilates. And avoid prostaglandins because of the post-operative risk of macular edema. There's a wide range of zonulopathy in cataract patients with pseudo exfoliation, ranging from seemingly normal zonular tension in the preoperative assessment to frank phacodonesis. Two preoperative signs, in particular, forewarn of weak zonules, patients with very poor dilatation and obvious white accumulation of a pupillary margin with, tend to have more advanced zonular weakness. And one big red flag is a shallow anterior chamber despite a normal axial length. So can we be equipped like this? No, we'll have to prepare for this. Pupil expanders, capsular hooks, capsular tension rings, capsular tension segments, OVDs of different types and IOL of different types. So we have a plan A, plan B, plan C, whatever as the surgery moves, we have all the armamentarium, we have all the things that we could possibly require during the surgery there. So this is a small pupil, the pseudo exfoliation. So with a pupil like this, I don't think there is any room for chances. So we go ahead and use the iris hooks. Now the iris hooks can be used the iris hooks can be used after the trap and blue is used. But if the pupil is small, perhaps the periphery, uh, the, when the pupil is expanded, that time uh, the staining is not good. So I found this very good that you put in an air bubble and put the four cap uh, the iris hooks and then stain the capsule. That gives it a better, better staining and uniform staining. Another thing is how much to stretch these iris hooks. We know uh, conventionally we are taught not to stretch them too much, but when we are talking about pseudo exfoliation, we are constantly trying to look at the bag. So if we are trying to look at the bag during the surgery, yeah, this is stopping again. So um, we're looking at the capsular bag throughout the surgery, then we have to have some space from where we can constantly look. Otherwise, if we were to make a capsular excess of around 5, 5.5, and uh, the, mm, the exposure by the iris hooks could have been enough. I'm sorry, this is working a little slowly. So uh, once the excess is done, uh, then, uh, you see, because of these iris hooks, we have ma managed a good-sized rexus. Uh, and uh, this would not have been possible if the rex uh, rexus, uh, if the pupil size was small. Once that is done, it is all very important, like uh, Dr. Rina said, that we uh, um, dial the nucleus, do a nucleotomy, safe way, watching the bag, do a nice cortical cleanup, and then we inject the IOL and then remove the lens. Sometimes it is good to remove the two hooks on the sides of the main port with this idea that it might, because there may be some tenting, and while you're going inside, you might actually um, hurt the iris there. So uh, here we have injected first and then removed, and removed all the viscoelastic after that. The chances, the here we were uh, reasonably sure that there, there was no uh, subluxation and throughout the surgery the zonules seemed to be fine. And then there is the borderline nucleus. 
Here we are not sure, is it big enough? And is there any zonular weakness? Because uh, uh, you might have many surprises during the surgery. And will this pupil finally come down as the surgery progresses? Now you can see here that uh, we have uh, stained the capsule, we are irrigating with um, BSS which has some adrenaline in it also. The pupil size after viscoelastic injection has increased a little bit. And then the rexis has to be kept as much near the pupillary margin as possible. What that does is it gives us a reasonable size. Sometimes you can actually, uh, you can move the capsule uh, flap over the iris and move it, but not to touch the iris. Because if you touch the iris, this already uh, plus minus uh, pupil is going to quickly uh, become smaller and the pupil size will become difficult. And then there's a difficulty in surgery. You can see in the surgery that the pupil size more or less has uh, remained the same during surgery and we have been able to go through it without any issues. Then there's this other pupil. It's almost the same size, but you can see more pseudo exfoliation. So I'm, this is under topical. I'm putting some intracampral uh, uh, phenocaine, lidocaine, and then staining the capsule with trap and blue. Another important thing is that when you are going uh, with a topical surgery, you have to be very careful that you are constantly communicating with the patient. So this pupil has not expanded much. It's almost the same. Here you see as soon as you initiate. See, this is the important part. Whenever you are operating pseudo exfoliation, as soon as you are initiating and you are seeing a dimple occurring in the capsule, then you know that the zonules are not good enough. There is not enough counter pressure. You can see here a dimple right in the center. There is not enough counter pressure from the zonules for this rexis to proceed normally. So, but. Um, even with the cystotome, I think uh, uh, I would agree with Dr. Aditya that uh, sometimes the, we should have both uh, these uh, in our armamentarium, the forcep capsulorexis as well as the cystotome. Here I'm going with the cystotome, but you can see how much these, uh, this bag is moving. So I uh, decide to change course, use a forcep, and then complete my rexis. Now, when I complete my rexis, right, at this time, I already know uh, that the zonules are weak. So you could see I put a little bit of viscoelastic under the capsule and then place these capsular hooks. Now, capsular hooks are designed for the uh, capsule. Iris hooks also can be used, but they need more care. But they have a blunt tip and you can go in a little more uh, bigger in size but uh, they are the instruments made for this purpose. And once you have all the four uh, capsular hooks in, then you know that you have literally put an external zonules and external support. But it would still be important to remember that there will be no equatorial support. These are just supporting on the sides. Now this uh, Rotation is very critical because you know that you have to do a safe phaco emulsification and for that you need to have a rotating nucleus. And uh, you go in, bring down your bottle height, bring down your parameters, go slowly. This video is played at a slightly faster speed than it was actually done. And once you complete it, then, uh, then there's this other step at which you can have a little problem is this step because if, if, if the zonular support is not good enough you should be careful during the IA also. And you go ahead and implant the lens, no, because you could see there was some difficulty, you put in a CTR first. Now, the C what does the CTR at this stage do? There are a lot of um, uh, controversies regarding the role of a CTR when uh, surgery has been completed and the long-term uh, stability of the bag. But I always feel that it is good if you have weak zonules, you go in and put in a CTR and get some additional support to the bag. Once that is done, you remove the capsular hooks, do a good very cautious eye and remove whatever viscoelastic you have left there. 
Then there is another uh, matter of a small pupil with zonular weakness. Now here I have already put the hooks going in and uh, then doing a rexis. Again, rexis, I told you, as you initiate it and as the rexis progresses, you know that there, there, there could be uh, signs of weak zonules, which you might not have picked up preoperatively. You can see here, I'm facing a lot of problem, and you can see the bag moving on this side. So I complete this rexis, and then I go ahead and make separate ports uh, very close to the iris hooks, or the position can be a diamond configuration um, at around uh, opposite sides, but you can make them nearby. Now we have um, capsular hooks and iris hooks coming together in uh, one packing. So when you put one, you can go through ahead, go ahead and put through. I have removed one of the iris hooks and for additional stability placed it on the capsular hook. And this iris hook also I am removing and placing on the capsular margin so that there is more stability. And uh, that has helped us go through this case uh, safely. Here again, CTR is an important thing for stability during the surgery. Here I'm placing it before the nucleotomy, before the nucleotomy. So it is giving us an additional equatorial support. You can see this uh, CTR is going before the nucleotomy. The nucleotomy will not become difficult, but finally the IA becomes difficult because uh, the capsular tags, the cortical matter, uh, sorry, the cortical matter gets uh, entangled in the uh, CTR and it becomes a little difficult and it has to be removed tangentially. But, and again, this surgery has to move slowly. If we do not move slowly and we are in a rush, we might cause a catastrophe. Again, you can see the IOL has been placed and the uh, hooks are being removed now. The floppy iris is another issue which can complicate uh, issues further. You know how many people are taking medication and you can see here, I have almost finished the case, but I can see now, every now and then the capsule is coming in because there is no equatorial support. So uh, I decide, no, most of the surgery has gone well. So what I do, even though there is some sub-incisional cortex, you can see the iris coming out. This is not the classical way an iris should be reposited. So I go in again and implant the lens, hoping that the uh, haptics of the lens will support the bag nicely. And then I, uh, again, when you are going in, you, sh you should not, you should try and avoid dialing the lens. I'm just nudging it in. You could see even the haptic I've nudged in then placing it nicely and then uh, removing this sub-incisional cortex. And again, here you would question that if we were in a position to place an CTR in the other cases, most probably before the surgery, you could see the capsule was coming like this. So we uh, put some viscoelastic and put a CTR ring after we have implanted the IOL. So just to summarize, wash the lens while you're putting in an air bubble and all the time be cautious. Watch each step. Again, you're going in, washing the trap and blue, watch the lens. You will see the uh, pupil is going, do not over inflate with the viscoelastic. Do not over inflate with the viscoelastic because these zonules are weak. Look at the capsular axis, watch the bag. Watch the bag, whether it's moving or not. Move, this axis is moving nicely. There is absolutely no problem. You are seeing sub, some, some subcapsular fibrosis also, but it's not interfering our, in our capsular uh, CCC formation. Once that is done, this is a very important step that you wash the bag while you are uh, doing hydro dissection. You can see the bag is moving just a little bit, just a little bit. When I was tapping it that time also, it was moving a little bit. So I feel confident enough to go ahead and operate here Again, the you know, rotation has to be very gentle. You don't want any more stress on the zonules. You go in and bring down the bottle height. You're working at a low bottle height. It's important that the chop is the best method uh, by which least uh, stress is put on the zonules. So I seem to be going on all right. And then I don't want to rotate. The, then you can see the other side. All the zonules are coming up. So I know for, for that this side, there's a lot of zonular weakness. So I go ahead and put 
uh, capsular hooks here, one, two, three, then I think that uh, most probably if these zonules are weak, most probably the other zonules will also be weak. So uh, I go ahead and, sorry, anyway. So uh, another important thing is the capsular contraction syndrome. Once the surgery is done, we know that this is a reality. So these do well with relaxing YOG laser relaxing capsulotomies. Early recognition is very important. That's why after the surgery, the pseudo exfoliation patient should undergo thorough and frequent examinations. You have to detect an early increase in the IOP, in the inflammation, and the IOL dislocation. So it, it can never be like this. <laughs> Preparedness and the confidence are the key. Yeah.